Hello. Let's have another video here. Uh, this one's going to be about a, a camp wood stove that I picked up uh, about two years ago, I guess, from my local Princess Auto store. And I picked it up because I'm, I, I hope to get a wall tent uh, for some backcountry uh, hunting, hopefully in the spring, that I can use next fall. So I'd gone out and uh, planned ahead and bought, went out and bought this camp wood stove. Now this is the model that I bought. I bought the Red Mountain Valley Camp Wood Stove, and it's meant for a wall tent, just like you see in the picture there. So here's the specs that come right off the box for anyone that's interested. So there's those. And here's the picture of the stove right off the box. Now, I will tell you that the picture you're looking at on the box is not what I'm about to show you. Um, that picture was that's how the stove comes in the box. I had it, mine modified, just to, to suit my purposes better. So I will show you what I had done for mine. And here it is. So, a little bit different. Now I took this to a welder and had it professionally done because I'm not a welder and those aren't uh, skills that I have. So I got some professional help to do this to make it uh, the way I wanted it and because if I tried to do this it would not uh, have turned out at all. So what did I do? I took those round, took the round top off and uh, those grates that come with the stove, I had those cut off and in instead I had a flat cooktop installed. Um, and after I, I had this built, I took it home, I fired it up and I uh, actually made a grilled cheese sandwich on the top here and it, it was great. It worked, it worked, worked, worked like a hot dam. So uh, another thing that I had done uh, this black tubing here that you guys can see. This black tubing is the tubing that comes with the stove when you buy it. Uh, as you look up here, you see a chunk of silver tube right here. That is muffler pipe. Now, the reason why I had a piece of muffler pipe was because the black tubing, chimney tubing that comes with these stoves, the tubes, I'll show you here, the tubes, they don't fit inside each other in such a manner that, that is really helpful. They, they stack on top of each other. I don't know if you guys can see that, but the tubes stack on top of each other, which is all well and great, but the problem is, is that when they stack on top of each other like that, when you're burning wood like, you know, pine and fir and, and those types of woods, you, get, you have creosote. Well, the creosote gets hot, and it's inside these tubes. As you can, I don't know if you can see that. You might be able to see that, yeah. As you can see, there's some right here. That's the, the creosote where it's run down from the where these are linked together. It's run down and you have creosote running, hot creosote running on the outside of your chimney pipes. And I didn't really like that. I thought that was not the coolest idea. So I went to my local muffler shop and I took a piece of this pipe and I had him flare out. And you can see here, I had him flare out just enough so that these black tubes would then be flipped upside down and then they would fit inside the muffler pipe. And then if I come to the top, you can see there's the flare right there for the tube. So now when I stack the rest of the black tubes on top, the, the creosote, when I burn pine, the creosote will stay inside the pipes all the way down instead of running on the outside. The only spot where I will have an issue with that is right here and this is the only joint where the creosote will leak out. Um, now you might think well why wouldn't you address that at the beginning? Well at the time when I uh, did, had the stove built the funds were low it, you know I wasn't I didn't want to sink hundreds of dollars into a you know a seventy dollar or sixty five dollar stove so I, I had a limited funds and I didn't want to you know pile money into it so I, I, I kind of worked with the materials I had, and, and a somewhat limited budget. So that's kind of why that works out that way. Um, this, is a, this is a good idea. It works out great. But one thing I will say right off the, the top here is, for those of you interested, I would, I would say, I would recommend that you take off the, um, the black base that comes with this stove, just get rid of it all together, get rid of the, the, the black chimney tubes that all come with it all together, and consider 
installing bigger tubes or getting, you've got enough room here, you could install those six inch, you know, a standard six inch chimney flue with the, you know, you put the damper, there's a damper you can buy. And I, w I would, you know, maybe think about doing something like that uh, if I had to do this over again, because it would just be a little more standardized, make it a little easier, right? There's no damper really on this stove per se, aside from what's on the door, which I'll show you in a second. So that's uh, the stove, the pipe, and those modifications. Um, the pipe, this chimney does, or the stove also does come with a cap, which is, you know, it's cheaply made. I mean, as you can see, I, you know, the, there's a, you can see that, but anyways, there's a cheap tack weld there, and yeah, I can flex it already. So, again, that's not a, uh, you know, a highly built part, but. Moving on, um, the door, there's the door that I had um, made for this when I had this done. Now the door, the original door that comes with the stove is much smaller. It's a, a smaller square style door. I had the welder take the door off completely and remake me a new one that takes up the whole size of the, the front of the stove so I could fit in larger pieces of wood. Uh, this is the original airflow uh, vent that was on that came off the original stove. I just had him reinstall it. Um, I, I changed the handle. Uh, my handle is much much bigger, more robust. The handle, the, the door handles that come on these stoves, uh, they're small, they're kind of tiny and half-assed tacked on and they're, they're not that great. So I got I got him to rebuild me a door handle. Um, inside, see if I can just get my light here. Inside these stoves, when you get them, they do not, they're not going to come with this grate you see. I had this grate um, cut to fit the welder, uh, cut it and fit it and put it in for me, uh, which was nice of him. I didn't, it wasn't uh, something I asked for, but he thought it was a good add-on. So he was nice enough to do that for me. And it works great because it keeps the wood off the bottom of the stove. The bottom of the stove won't burn out as fast. And obviously it helps with airflow. And if we look in the back, let's see if I can get down there. There is a baffle back there now I, again that was another little add-on that the uh, that the welder did for me that I uh, really did appreciate and uh, one other thing is that you know obviously with this the front of the stove being as open as it is I don't have to worry so much about you know using having to re refill the stove as often because I've got a bigger opening here to work with which means I can put in bigger pieces of wood. So in theory, this will, you know, I'll get more burn time and not have to fill the stove as often. So, so there's that. There it is. Um, the legs are, you know, they're stand. The legs that are on it are. It's what came in the box. I made no modifications there, at all. Um, they can little wing nuts here. You just loosen the wing nut. The legs come off. It's just a standard for these stoves. The only thing that I did differently was that the these brackets here, I had them welded onto the bottom of the stove. More just permanent, that's all. But the legs themselves do come out. Uh, another thing I'll mention is that inside here, all the pieces for these stoves fit inside the stove. So the legs come off, they fit inside. The black chimney pipes, they all fit inside. Um, but... The silver muffler pipe that I bought obviously is significantly is longer than the stove itself and doesn't fit inside the stove. So obviously I mean, you have to carry that. But the other pieces, and here's a few other ones. Uh, you've got the cap and you've got this tool here for, for scraping out the ash. And you've got this other tool here for, you know, moving the logs around and stuff. So these are all things that come in the box when you get the stove and they work just fine. I mean, obviously you can modify them and change them and if that's, you know, suits your purpose. One tool or one uh, idea that I have that I haven't got to yet, that I would like to get to hopefully this winter, is to get a, or have a tool made uh, that will clean out these pipes. These pipes aren't very big. And get a tool that I can scrape the creosote out because in my area we, got, we burn a lot of pine. And obviously they fill up with the creosote pretty bad so as you I don't know if you can see maybe 
Anyways, if you can kind of see in there, I've cleaned out a little bit and there's still some creosote stuck in there. So some ideas I had there was, you know, a, a long tool with a handle, something perhaps, perhaps like this, you know, a smaller end to, to get down there and scrape the creosote out. Another idea uh, is that you could possibly, you know, maybe your local hardware store might have a, a long brush, something you could put on the end of a drill, you know, like a wire brush, and that would be ideal for cleaning out these stove pipes. It would make your you know life a hell of a lot easier. I have seen other videos out there where guys have built a fire and then put these pipes in the fire and heated them up and the crease salt runs out that way. That's another way of doing it. Um, so yeah, there's 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 some ideas there. Again, I uh, I had this stove modified for me to fit my purposes uh, because I'm going to use it in my wall tent in the back country. Hopefully, I can get my wall tent this next spring and be able to use it next fall but uh, we're not quite there yet so this was a project I wanted to show you guys share it if hopefully this will uh, give somebody some other ideas there it is so anyways I hope this was helpful to somebody and uh, yeah guys remember that uh, safety first these are not meant to be permanent fixtures in someone's house so please please do not try and use this as a replacement for a professionally built, you know, installed wood stove or fireplace. Do not do that. That is, that's not safe. Uh, check with your, all your local building codes and building regulations uh, and specs at all times before you make any ideas of, of changing and modifying these types of things um, because, you know, we don't want to see anyone get hurt. That's, that's not the whole point of this. So be safe. Have fun with it. Um, but again, follow your local rules and guidelines because they're there for a reason. It's sometimes as much as we don't like to, but those things are there for a reason. So I hope this helps and uh, you guys have a good day. All right. Talk to you later.